What do Mario, Pikmin, Mother, Zelda, Donkey Kong, Pokemon, Pilot Wings, and countless other Nintendo franchises all have in common? They were all designed and or produced by Shigeru Miyamoto, the mastermind behind so many beloved Nintendo classics. Some games though haven't made waves in the industry, and some of these games don't even have a cult following despite being crafted by Mr. Miyamoto himself. Mole Mania is one of those lost gems. It is a handheld tale of kidnapping, child abduction, and ransom. Jinbi, a villainous farmer, is tired of moles tearing up his land, so he devises a plan to kidnap said moles, hiding them across several different areas. One problem, two of the moles were left behind, one being Grandpa Mole, who saw the kidnapping take place, and the other being you, Muddy Mole, the father and husband of the abducted family. Mole Mania is best described as an action puzzle game. What sets it apart from the rest is the underground gameplay element, allowing you to dig holes in dirt and travel under previously inaccessible areas. Each area on the map is divided into square rooms. The goal is to solve the puzzle and move on to the next room. This is done by taking a wrecking ball and smashing it against a concrete door. Often of times you'll need to work underground to move the wrecking ball from point A to point B, and then point C, D, E, F, and G. A room can take as little as a few moves to as much as a dozen. The ball can either be pushed ahead or thrown either behind you or in front of you. However, once it goes in a hole, it's back to square one. As more hazards and enemies are thrown into the pot, you'll be at greater risk at losing all four slivers of health. Luckily, health can easily be obtained by a recovery potion found in-game, or at a health station headed by Grandpa Mole. Grandpa Mole will refill all your health, but be forewarned. Being greedy with his hospitality will result in dire consequences. The different levels in Mole Mania open up after completing the first. You're free to explore them out of order in case you get stuck, and you will get stuck, trying to solve a puzzle. At the end of each stage awaits a boss battle. The very first boss encountered is a kangaroo aptly titled Kangaroo. Simply move the spike platforms under his shadow three times to defeat him. After he is beaten, a gigantic cabbage will fall from the heavens and one of Muddy's children will pop out. A humorous cutscene will then play, followed by your accumulated score from the level. Score is affected by locating items, knocking small cabbages into holes, completion time, map percentage, and completing a special bonus stage. This gives the game some extra replay value, and considering you'll lose hours trying to beat later levels as it is, it's a Game Boy game with quite a bit of longevity. Getting 100 doesn't always come so easily. Every one of the main stages has a secret bonus stage located within. At first, you might accidentally stumble upon them, whereas the less evident ones require a bit of underground sleuthing. Out of the corner of a room might be an opening that can take you far off course, causing much twisting and tunneling across a handful of screens to finally reach the secret island where the bonus stage resides. The bonus stage is very similar to the game's two-player mode, where one player controls Muddy as usual, and the other player controls Jinbi. The goal is to knock all the cabbages into holes before time runs out. If Jinbi hits you, you'll lose three seconds of time per hit. Since the bonus stages can be replayed over and over, all it takes is a bit of time to get your 20 points and carry on through the level. The player has the ability to smack Jinbi upside the head with a cabbage, which buys some much needed time in this fast-paced bonus stage. Later ones change up the terrain both above and underground. The difficulty in the bonus stages can feel mind-numbingly frustrating, but a stroke of luck and well-planned cabbage holing gives just enough challenge without causing the Game Boy to meet the glass window. The levels in the actual game begin introducing new gameplay elements to fiddle with. 
The barrel, one of the more predominant items, can be thrown just like the ball can, only it can also be used to plug up holes in the ground, allowing the player to easily drag the ball to the exit block. The barrel can just as easily make things difficult, however. Should things get unfixable without a solution in sight, a surrender item exists to freebie out the room. It can only be used once per stage, so you'll want to save it for the toughest of tough. The barrels also present a new noodle scratcher to deal with, how they affect underground navigation. When the barrels plug up the holes, they also block the path of muddy underneath the ground. One little screw up can require a restart of the room entirely. In order to clear this particular room, you must not obstruct the farthest holes to the left. Block the first two holes, then move the last barrel past the spikes. Toss it to the other spikes. Go underground. Block the lower left hole. Grab the ball. Place it on the spikes. Go underground. Throw the ball over the planted barrel and onto the other spikes. Drag it down. Throw it onto the spikes. Lift it. And then finally smash it through the door. Other game changers pop up, such as the heavyweight. You can use the weight to corner enemies, but usually they just wind up getting in the way. Weights can't be pulled, only pushed, so ensuring a clear path without making the weights immobile becomes a concern. Elbow pipes work as a detour for the ball or barrel. Toss one or the other into the pipe and let the pipes do the rest. Sometimes the only way to clear an area is by using the pipe to launch the ball or barrel in an otherwise unattainable direction. Maneuvering underground to position the pipe just right is a commonplace necessity. You often line them up right with the exit block and shoot the wrecking ball right into place. Several other new gameplay elements include direction changing panels, spikes that can't be walked on, and little underground rodents known as weevils, who result in the lion's share of cheap deaths. Mole Mania is the kind of video game parents should be proud to see their children play. The later puzzle rooms do nothing short of rack your brain, sometimes downright cruelly. Time becomes of the essence in puzzles that necessitate quick thinking. Having to move a pipe or throw the ball at just the right moment without getting hurt is key in these sort of rooms. One room in particular is full of pipes and spikes. The only way to clear it is by throwing the barrel at just the right moment. Should you mess up, it's time to exit the room and try again. The barrel itself isn't even used to fill the hole, making you think that you have to plug up a hole since there is a barrel in the room, but no, it's there to block the ball or simply isn't used at all, aside from purposely throwing you off on what you're supposed to do. A room in level 6 stands out as one of the hardest parts of the game for the same reason. The barrels are never used to plug a hole, they simply serve as a ball blocker. Mining the properties of the weight, spikes, and barrel, figuring out which one goes where and in what order, and whether or not you even have to use said item is a challenge in itself. Mole Mania can most certainly be a time-consuming, trial-and-error affair. Its boss battles aren't as tricky as its puzzles. The hardest part about them is usually figuring out just where to begin. You'll battle a heat-waving sun, a mad wrenchman, an uncomfortably strange wrestler-ballerina duo, plus other oddities. After clearing all seven main levels, you'll finally gain access to Jimby's Farmer Fortress. Level 8 isn't like the others. It's a boss marathon, not unlike something you'd see in Kirby or Mega Man. Here, some of the boss battles are amped up in difficulty, with only one wrecking ball used instead of two. The final showdown against Jinbi is by far the hardest boss battle in the entire game. There are no cabbages this time around, though. The goal is to destroy the four corner exit blocks. Jinbi is especially fast on his feet, making even getting a single goal without getting hit a challenge. Losing this battle means having to go back to face some of the other bosses, so it's especially a high pressure boss battle. Should Muddy manage to defeat him once and for all, he'll find his wife inside of the Sky Cabbage. The couple reunite and travel back to their home with their rescued children, concluding the game. Mole Mania practically oozes charm from its theme, to its catchy music, to its gameplay style, and especially all the comical cutscenes and signage. It'll make you laugh regardless of age. The puzzles still provide a true sense of challenge for experienced players, even if some of the later stages feel a bit overboard. Plain and simple though, Mole Mania deserves to be remembered and enjoyed by everyone. That is, if you have the required patience for it. 